Warning: Nitric acid is corrosive and oxidizing. Concentrated ammonia solution is corrosive. Wear gloves when handling them. The experiment requires very high temperatures. Hello guys, here is Dr. MIH. This is the fourth video of the first project, and we're going to make nitric acid using ammonia and the platinum catalyst we made last time. The link to that is in the description. This method we are using is known as the Oxford oxidation, since it was first discovered by the German chemist Wilhelm Oxford. It was still the most frequently used industrial method to make nitric acid. I made this video with a lot of references to a video of astrochemistry, since it was one of the few videos on YouTube that actually did this. The link is also down in the description. Let's get started. First, we build the apparatus. Today's apparatus is kind of complicated and consists of many parts, so I'll build it piece by piece. The first thing is the air pump that gives the air necessary for the reaction. This is then connected to a conical flask, which will contain the ammonia. Next up is a quartz tube that I got from an infrared heating device. This is the critical component of the apparatus, since it is where the reaction mainly happens and must withstand very high temperatures of around 1000 degrees. This is why I used a quartz tube instead of normal gloss, since normal gloss will soften and melt at around 800 degrees celsius, but quartz, which is silicon dioxide, melts at around 1600 degrees celsius. Here is what the final apparatus looks like. After the quartz tube, there is a round bottom flask for oxidation, and finally a conical flask to absorb the product. The chemicals that we need today are ammonia solution, calcium oxide, and anhydrous calcium chloride. I have a hair dryer lying around in the background because I don't want to breathe in the ammonia. Don't ask me how I knew this. Be careful when dealing with those concentrated ammonia solution. Measure out 17 milliliters of concentrated ammonia, which has a mass percentage of around 25% ammonia. Then mix this with an additional 34 milliliters of water to make roughly 50 milliliters of dilute ammonia. Pour this into the conical flask. Then add some calcium oxide to the coarse tube. The exact amount isn't critical. We don't want any water vapor going to the catalyst since it will lower the temperature and stop the reaction. Next, put the piece of platinum catalyst in the middle of the coarse tube. Then put some anhydrous calcium chloride to the round bottom flask. Finally, add some water to the receiving conical flask. Now we can start the reaction. Switch the pump on and heat the catalyst. I used an alcohol burner instead of the alcohol lamp, since alcohol burner can do something like 1000 degrees, but alcohol lamp can only handle around 500 degrees. You can also use a butane torch. Safety precautions must be taken, as the burner might overheat and explode. I'm having a real hard time dealing with the burner, since it did not start up a steady flame. I think I tried it for like 5 or 6 times before actually getting it to work. My apparatus also started leaking gas, so the whole room now smells like an old toilet. This is a pain. I finally got the burner working, and the catalyst was glowing red. But then, when I removed the burner, it stops glowing. This is very bad, since it means the reaction did not start. I tried several times on initiating the reaction, but that proved to be a failure. I was very frustrated by this. I suspected that the temperature was not enough, and, well, the catalyst didn't work. So I bought a small butane torch and some pre-made platinum catalysts. They're supposed to work in those tiny stuffs for warming your hands. I did a small test using a glass jar filled with ammonia gas, and heated the catalyst with my torch until it glows red. I then put it inside the jar, but then the glow stopped immediately. I then tried the platinum wire I got last time the same way, but then it also did not work. So here I concluded some possible problems in the process. The first problem is that the catalyst did not have a lot of platinum on it. So in the video on the catalyst, I did not dissolve a lot of platinum into the solution because I did not have a very concentrated hydrochloric solution and the peroxide wasn't concentrated as well. So I'm considering to remake the catalyst using a more concentrated hydrochloric acid or to do it in a different way, like change the catalyst. For example, I heard that using chromium-3 oxide or vanadium-5 oxide might work. 
The second potential problem is the oxygen ammonia ratio. So maybe I included too much ammonia in inside the reaction chamber, or I included too uh too less air. So what I'm thinking is to、uh, substitute pure oxygen instead of air, because that will give it a very fast rate of reaction. But I'm still worrying that I I've read some texts and these texts say that the thing might explode when there are too much oxygen. So this I probably won't try this. The third point is the temperature. I think it was quite apparent that the alcohol burner did not do a very good job on controlling the temperature to be high, because according to my research, the industrial setting for this osmer oxidation requires something like. Eight hundred to nine hundred degrees Celsius, but I, I I seriously don't think the alcohol burner worked up to that temperature, so maybe I'll try it using a butane torch or maybe even do an electric heating, just like in the industrial setups. I probably would go over these one by one next time I handle the project, but for now I'm obliged to just stop the project for a while and do my research on the topic. I really need help right now, so if you guys have any valuable resources, I would appreciate it more than anything. The project will be hopefully restarted in February. Thank you very much for your support.